Okay, the I-Pace, so I'm just an um, independent garage that does a lot of EV stuff. And they've got a couple of I-Paces here. This one's a 70 plate. Looks like it's got onboard charger failure, so this is partially stripped. Um, and this is actually an updated vehicle. It's a model year 2021 onwards, um, which is kind of interesting on this car because they've updated the onboard charger um, and this one's got issues. So there are various issues with um, with the I-Pace. They are so odd, in my opinion. Um, so this one says ready. Okay, so let's put it in reverse. So the um, parking lock's come off. Um, yeah, and let's see if we can move. No, you, 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 can't, you can't move. It says the battery's flat, but it goes into reverse. But it doesn't, but it doesn't do anything. So strange. And the high voltage system on this car doesn't even come on. Even though it goes into ready and you can put it in reverse, nothing happens. Very strange. I've not seen that on any other cars. So this one's got an onboard charger fault. So up to 2020 with the I-Pace, the DC-DC converter and the onboard charger were separate units. So up to 2020, they actually had two 12 volt batteries. One's a kind of starter battery, although it doesn't have to crank. So that's a bit of an odd architectural um, decision anyway, but like a smaller battery, a bit the size of a motorbike battery to run all the ECUs, and then another battery kind of runs everything else effectively, a bigger one. And a bit like some of the uh, sort of fossil beamers and Merc, stuff like that. We've seen issues with that sort of split charge system. So the DC-DC converter has to charge two 12 volt batteries and sort of manage that. We've seen some issues with that. So from 2021 onwards, model year, the Jaguar I-Pace has a single 12 volt battery and a combined onboard charger and DC-DC converter. And this car has a fault with that unit. Um, and when the garage rung up um, Jaguar parts desk to sort of find out parts price and availability, the unit had been superseded about four times, I think it was. So there's a new part number from the part number we provided to them. Um, there's been an improved model like three or four times to try and fix it. So there's always a bit of a clear that there's some issues there, but yeah, pretty, pretty mad. Um, I've seen quite a few issues with the my paces at independent garages. Um, I mean, this one is here because the dealer just couldn't even fit it in um, for months because there's kind of so many issues. Um, high voltage battery fault. So the I-Pace is like all other EVs in the UK have an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty, which is great on the high voltage battery. Um, and there are a few, there, there can be an issue with the high voltage battery in the I-Pace and then it can need repair or replacement. Okay, fine, and that can take a while. But there was a software update to um, basically make sure the battery doesn't get into any dangerous conditions when it has this issue. Software update limits charging to about 70%. So then we started, have, we started having cars turning up. Oh, my iPace won't charge more than 70%. I was like, oh, okay, great. I think I know what that is. Um, but yeah, so these um, with these battery faults, the, the iPace is, is taking quite a long time for the dealers to fix them, which isn't ideal. Um, we obviously got an expensive car and it's sat there and you can't use it. Um, as well as that, um, the sort of onboard charger, DC-DC, um, and the high voltage battery, we've seen issues with the parking lock. Um, so that kind of not coming off and the vehicle's not able to move. So I think they're all dual motor. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. So the drivetrain on them all is the same. And then if you have different um, sort of um, trim level, you can have a different trim level, but it's not like a Tesla where you can have, you know, dual motor or single motor or whatever. Um, so, you you know, your trim might be a bit different internally I mean, in the car um, if you have a different one, but they're all dual motor. The front one has a parking lock. I've seen issues with that. Um, <laughs> we've seen issues with motors. This one is kind of amusing. So this garage has got two iPaces at the moment. One of them came in, it seemed to have a bit of a drivability issue, and uh, the front tyres were shredded. And we're thinking, this is a bit weird. So they're all dual motor, okay. Fault code for motor, resol motor resolver, which is like the position sensor within the motor. So they're all uh, brushless AC three-phase motors. And then the motor controller fires the three phases and it needs to get a feedback signal so that it knows how it's moved and that it's moved correctly. And that's quite fine, there's a fine tolerance on that. So this car, um, it had a motor resolver issue, but you could drive it, although it didn't seem quite right. Put it on the ramp, put it in drive, rear wheels turned normally, and the front wheels kind of jerked around. 
So the car has got an issue with that feedback or an issue with the motor. It looks like it needs a new motor. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, it literally is shredding its own tires, although you could drive it a little bit mad. One of the other real quirky things we've found with these is isolation faults, okay? So within an EV, an isolation fault is a link between the high voltage system and the body of the car, the metal chassis body that shouldn't be there. So an example of this might be if you get like um, an air conditioning compressor and it's got moisture in it, because it's high voltage, so 375 volts, something like that, 350 to 400 on a standard 400 volt EV, um, that moisture will provide a path from the high voltage to the body of the car through the case of the compressor and the car picks that up because it's got all EVs have isolation monitoring um, from within the battery so when they start up it kind of tests the battery yep battery looks okay and then when the car starts it can then test the rest of the car I'm going to turn this car off it's not even on as mentioned earlier um, yeah so when the when the um, car then starts, that isolation monitoring is still there between the high voltage power and the body. Um, and then the car is testing everything outside. So like your aircon compressor is then connected when the battery, um, when the car starts and the battery turns on its contactors so that everything's got high voltage. So that test that's being carried out in the battery then encompasses the whole vehicle. And with eye paces, we've had cars that have convinced they've got isolation faults and you run through the Jaguar manufacturer procedure and it does not find the isolation faults <laughs> um and i know that the within the hevra network um they developed a new test plan to find these faults um and chatting to their um like chief tech guy their like level three lead technical guy um it's not only within one component that that the faults have been found. So one was an aircon compressor, uh, one was a motor controller, and they've got other cars with this being investigated on. So multiple eye paces, um, independent garages with isolation faults. Um, whether the car is too sensitive might be one one possibility. But yeah, we just seem to be seeing a lot of a lot of issues with the eye pace. There are other models um, that you see issues on. I mean, kind of all cars have some issues. But yeah, we're seeing we're seeing quite a few issues on the iPace. So yeah, if you've got an iPace, if you've had a problem, um, that would be fascinating. So this one is a seventy plates done, yeah, forty one um, thousand miles. So yeah, battery's flat because the onboard charger's not working. But so bizarre that this car. So I've monitored the high voltage with diagnostic machine. Um, you can start the car. So foot on brake, press start. It says vehicle shutting down. Then it goes into ready. But the, I've looked at the voltages and the contactor status and all that kind of stuff. And this car is off. It's not on. It's not ready. It, it's totally bizarre. So trying to fault find these vehicles is really strange. It sort of thinks it's starting. We can put it into drive. There we go. Parking lot comes off. Um, but you put your foot down. Nothing happens. It, it, this car is it, it's totally bizarre. Um, really odd to work on, really strange logic. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll get there. But um, yeah, yeah, kind of issues. One of the eye paces that's here actually is under manufacturer warranty, but the customer said it would take so long to book it in with Jag that it's ended up on an independent garage. And so the customer is paying for the repair and it's not going to be cheap, but it's the only option to have the vehicle back um, at any reasonable time. So yeah, hope that's interesting. If you've had an eye pace and you've had any issues, let me know. All right. Catch you later.